everyone welcome to the next lecture on the sequence and series today we will discuss about cauchy first theorem on the limit myself dr garg working in the school of mathematics you can simply follow my youtube channel dr harish garg for finding the various videos on real analysis so what is the objective of this lecture we will see how you can state and prove the cauchy first theorem on the limits and after that we will see how you can solve the problems related to them that is our target is to find what is the limit of such kind kind of the sequences are so what is our first cauchy theorem is there if you have a convergent sequence a n which converges to the l then the arithmetic mean of this sequence is also converges to the same limit l what is the meaning of that if i prove that a n is converges to 7 then the arithmetic mean that is a sum divided by n is also converges to the 7 so the proof is very simple if you look about clearly Uh, in the statement what which things is mentioned that they are talking only about this convergent so it means in this proof we are talking only about the convergent so there is no need of the monotonic sequence why because it is nothing mentioned in the statement so we can prove that so let an is the sequence which converges to the l so what is the definition of the convergent sequence it means it for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists m which is block for the natural number such that an minus l is here we also know that convergent sequence is a bounded so it means what is the definition of bounded is here now if you if you see equation number 1 and 2 we can prove this result what is the target is our target is to prove here again we will apply the definition of this that is we can start from here and our target is to prove it is a less than epsilon if we are able to prove that it means this converges to l here how how i can prove that i can write this number as a1 plus a2 up to an minus of the n l divided by l now i can write this n l into l parts l plus l plus up to the l i can take a1 minus l and so on. now here clearly says that this term equation number 1 is applicable only for n greater than m while equation number 2 is for all n but here you can see it means in somewhere it is a m so th there are the sum term which is less than of the m there are the sum term which are greater than or equal to m so i can bifurcate them like here all those term which are less than of the m all are here now i can open this triangular inequality this is here now clearly says that for this part what is the meaning of this part this is the result for n is greater than or equal to m it means equation 1 is applicable here so we can see this first part that is this part is less than of the epsilon because n is greater than or equal to m so this part is epsilon similarly and so on how many epsilons are there so it starts from the end ending at the m so it has it how many are there they are this one n minus m plus 1 for all the n greater than m now i can separate them how i can write that this i can written like of this way now clearly says that n is my greater than m and m is always be greater than of the n minus m so what is the meaning of that m minus 1 upon n is my less than of 1 so it means 1 minus of this is always be less than of here 1 minus of this is less than so it this number is less than 1 times epsilon that is i can say this part so we can see this part is less than epsilon now for this part this is for all n which is less than of the m so here it does it doesn't applicable so we can start from here so we we need a n minus l i can write this part as of this way what is the value of this since this is for all the n so it is applicable for the 1 2 even less than of the m so it is less than of or equal to m plus mod of l for all values of the n so therefore i can now compute this part so what is the first part this is less than of m minus 1 half so you can see m minus 1 they have now how you can see that so since this number goes to the zero as n approaches infinity so it means there exists a some positive natural number m1 such that this becomes a less than zero as per the definition of the convergent now clearly says that some numbers are greater than of the m 
some numbers are greater than of the m so there are some number which are greater than of the m some numbers either if m1 is written here then they are this if m1 is here then they are there so we can consider as k as the maximum of the m1 and the m so i can substitute both the values in here so the first part this is less than of epsilon we can this is here which is nothing but less than of the epsilon this part is less than of epsilon so epsilon plus epsilon is also less than of the epsilon so hence we can say this is a convergent sequence so that's a simple proof of this cauchy first theorem so look at the some examples related to them so whenever there is look at that this denominator of n this denominator of n it means you can apply the cauchy first theorem argument how you can apply that you can simply take the nth term this is my here compute the limit of this nth term which is nothing but my one which is a finite and a unique so therefore it is a convergent so by the cauchy first theorem once this is convergent to the one so average is also convergent to the one so a n is my here what is the a one it's a one what is the a two two raised to power one by two and so on we will get the same limit as of this look about this one so it's a one by n that's the average of this if i consider a n to be the one by n square and compute the limit zero which is again the limit is unique and finite so therefore it's a convergent hence here so therefore by the cauchy first theorem the limit average of this also converges to the same limit and so on look at the last example so here this is not the average but if you look about that this is a series of there this is the one this is the two three and so on if i consider the a k because already n is present k is my here so it means i if i divide both side by n and multiply by n now it becomes the average so i can consider here what is the limit as n approaches infinity it will be one it's a unique finite so it converges to the one so by the cauchy theorem what is the value of the a1 so a1 that's a case one so i can say this is n upon n square plus one a2 is a n square plus two and the last one is n n square plus n divided by n goes to the zero so if i take n as a common it will be cancelled out so hence we will get as the limit is is one is the required so this is the way you can simply prove the cauchy's first theorem of the limit r we will see the next lecture on the cauchy second theorem and its examples till then you can simply like share and comment this video with your friends best of luck students goodbye